Welcome back to our series on how to edit a documentary. And here we go with lesson three in this little mini series. And we're just going to pick up right where we left off. You remember in our last lesson, we were joining our music together with the first little bit of narration and voiceover. And we even put one little clip in place there of our first interview. And now in this lesson, we are going to start adding some illustrative video that uh, kind of goes together with our narration. And uh, from the olden days, back when we used to work with tape-based uh, decks as we assembled our edit, uh, this might still be referred to today as B-roll. And uh, this is just illustrative stuff that you have shot in the field that helps to cover the narration or especially interviews that you have shot in the field, B-roll or cover shots. Let's first of all make sure once again that our settings are the same so that when I do something here you know, on my computer that uh, when you try it at home that it will also work uh, the same way. And so over here, make sure you are in the overwrite mode and that your ripple mode is turned off. Have your video, video track on and your audio tracks on and that you have your slider button or pointer mapping tool, I guess we could call it, at the same level as video track one. And also that your audio pointer is pointing to audio track one, our ambient audio. And if you want to open that up, you could open that up so that as we drop down our uh, clips that they will fall onto track uh, one, video one, and audio one as well. If we had our, our selector down further, when we dropped a clip on, you'll notice what happens. The audio will want to go down to where we've pointed it to. But uh, if we uh, have that selected or pointed to the ambient audio track, then the clips are naturally going to fall in place. When we point the video to video track one, the audio is going to go exactly where we want it. Now, I should point out that you can override this uh, little selection. Let's say we have our track mapping pointer tool down at uh, audio three, but we still wanted to drag and drop our video down onto the video track, but have our audio go to the ambient audio, well, what you can do is just keep sliding your mouse down and actually point to the audio track that you want your audio to go to, and Edius will accept that. It'll override the pointer or the mapping tool with wherever you're pointing your mouse to. Let's say we wanted our audio to fall on track two. Well, we could just point to any track that we want that audio to land to and even create a new track if we had it down further, I believe. Yeah, it did. It, if we had, if we pointed further than what Edius allows, it actually created a new track to try and take that. Something you may notice, however, that as you do point your audio to tracks further down uh, below, you'll notice that once you get past where you have currently mapped your track, that as you continue going down further and pointing to a, a track lower than the track that you actually have mapped, that your video will also move. Your video portion will move up uh, and, and land on a video track that's higher than what you probably intended it to land on on video track one. Well, that's probably getting sidetracked too much. I just wanted to point that out, that you can override uh, your selected mapped track by using your mouse and pointing to audio tracks that are other than what is mapped. Just keep that in mind. <clears throat> we won't probably use it in this lesson, but it is something to keep tucked back in, in the back of your mind that when you use this drag and drop method of editing, you can override whatever track is mapped. And I should maybe point out that uh, in this lesson, we are going to be featuring the drag and drop method of editing using Edius. However, you should know that Edius is designed in such a way that you can also use the three point style of editing. And what we're going to do is in this lesson, assemble the first little section of our video using the drag and drop method. And then in our next tutorial, we're going to re-edit the same section of our video using the three point style so that you can get an idea of what style looks like it'll work best for you. If you are an experienced seasoned editor, you will most likely want to follow the style of method that you learned when you first started editing videos. So if you're coming from an avid background, you'll most likely want to use the three point style of editing. If you're coming from an Adobe background, 
um, you're most likely going to be most comfortable with the drag and drop method. But as you observe both methods, there may be some aspects about each one that you might find interesting or faster way to edit. And so you might want to adapt the, the current method that you are used to using. Or if you're brand new to editing, you might pick portions of each style that uh, kind of go best with your personality and the way that you find that you'll be most comfortable with or the or more uh, fast or more precise and uh, so we want to demonstrate both so that you can have the opportunity to choose what you think will work best for you okay so what we've got here is the very first part of the video is starting right now with a music track and we are now ready to start adding some video to go with that music but before we do that, I usually like to apply a black mat to video track one. I know that the video tracks are by default already black, the same black actually as our black mat, but I just kind of like having it there. It uh, allows us to dissolve up from black a little easier and uh, for that matter also allows us to uh, dissolve up our audio as well to go with our video if we have a black mat there in place. So let's uh, go after a black mat. I think I have one already in my graphics bin. Uh, in fact, we have several color mats from a previous tutorial we showed you how to do. If you have skipped over those tutorials, it's real easy to create a, a black mat. Just go up to new clip here, the little symbol of a color bars and choose color mat and hit OK and that will create your black mat. Now, as we double click on this black mat, it's a little different than almost every video and audio clip from the bin. Uh, usually when you uh, click on an audio track or a video track, it will show up in your uh, play window. You know, if it's audio, uh, it's not as obvious because the waveform doesn't show up, but it does actually uh, come over to your play window when you double click on it. Well, not so with a black mat or any mat for that matter. Let's go back to our mat. When you double click on a color mat, it just basically opens the color mat tool so that you can either add more colors or change the color. So uh, the only real way to bring it into your play window is to actually with a drag and drop. And that will bring your color mat in. But as you look down to your play bar here, you'll notice that it's, again, not like any other video clip you are used to working with. There's no playhead that shows up. You can't scrub back and forth, and there's no real duration. You don't really know how wide that is. At this point, we could, however, point to the black mat in our play window and drag that down to our timeline. Just place it right where we want. However, it's probably just as quick or maybe quicker, easier, just to drag it right from our bin down to our timeline and place it down there. Now, as we expand out our timeline, we see that uh, it is, I believe, by default about five seconds, but you're not stuck to that five seconds. You can grab either end of this and stretch it out to be any length of black that you want. Ideally, we want to stretch it right out to that point where the music starts, or actually maybe just a little bit further than what the music is, so it allows us the opportunity to, to dissolve up from black, dissolve our first clip. There's one other way of bringing clips in from the bin. Let's delete this. And that is right click on any clip. Well, first of all, take note of where your playhead is on your timeline. And what you want to do is take your mouse and point your playhead to that point where you want the clip to start. And then go up to your bin. And this works with any clip, whether it's audio, video, or mat. You can right click on it and choose Add to Timeline. Notice also that there is a keyboard shortcut that will make this even quicker and faster if you learn it. It's the Shift plus the Enter key. Uh, the trick is that you have to have your focus on your bin window in order for this to work. If your focus is somewhere else, like the play window, or you're pointed to the timeline window, you might look up here and say, okay, this color mat is selected, so I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut, shift enter, and nothing happens. All you do is start actually playing the playhead. And you might wonder, well, why doesn't that keyboard shortcut work? Well, the thing that you should keep in mind is that some keyboard shortcuts uh, will change uh, depending on what window you're focused on. And so the shift enter key is going to do one thing 
when your focus is on the bin and a different thing when it's focused in on the timeline. So keep that in mind when you're trying this. You have to have your focus on the bin. Hit your shift enter key. Oh, also make sure you, you're, you've pointed or focused or selected the clip that you want to send to the timeline and then hit the shift enter key and that sends your clip right down to where you had your playhead pointed. Also, it's going to send it to the tracks that you have mapped. If we had have had our audio down here to audio track three and did this again, let's point up to our bin window again, hit the shift enter key, and this time you'll see that the audio now goes down to the audio track three. So just make sure that uh, you place your head where you want that clip to start. You have the tracks mapped that you want where you want the clip to go before you try this little tool or trick of sending your clips directly to the timeline using the shift enter key. Okay, and if it's not exactly where you wanted it, you can stretch that out to end exactly where you want that. Okay, so we are ready to go after our first clip. And according to the script and the music, we've planned this out to show some shots of two uh, Karen girls uh, living out in a remote village in the Karen state of Myanmar, out in the jungle collecting leaves and other edible plants to bring back to their families. And so I've got that all together. Uh, all those shots I've placed together in a bin already. We've got them organized and we're ready to start using them. Okay, now the first shot is uh, always an important shot. It helps grab the attention of the viewer and often a viewer will decide within the first 10 seconds whether or not they're gonna stick around and watch your video, especially if it's up online. If you've got a captured audience at a school, then you're okay. And this particular video is actually targeting schools. And so we will have a captured audience. But it's also going to be going up on the internet. And so we want to make sure that those first few visuals are really capturing the attention of the viewer. So we have these two young girls with their little baskets in hand, leaving the uh, home, headed out uh, into the jungle to gather some plants. So I think we're going to try using this as our first shot. Not sure, quite sure how it works. It's a little unsteady. It's handheld, obviously, and uh, we try to avoid that as much as possible. But sometimes when you're following children wandering around or in the middle of a sports game, you can't always be on a tripod and capture all the action. So this one, unfortunately, is handheld, but we'll see how it works. So the idea is to pick a shot, pick a portion of the video that you think will be steady enough or work uh, well as that nice establishing shot. And when you've got uh, maybe three or four seconds, hit an out point either with these buttons here or using your keyboard shortcuts of O for out point, I for in point. And when you've got a portion that you think will work, uh, you can just drag and drop that from the window down to the timeline and place it right up against your black mat. Remember, in this tutorial, we're doing the drag and drop method. Okay, and so what we want to do then is probably put a little dissolve up from black. Now, as we look at this, let's expand out our track. We see that the dissolve is happening after the music starts down here. And so we could either extend our dissolve out to be just a little bit more so that it actually starts coming up, fading up from black as the music, as we start to hear the music. And as we listen to the music, we see that we could probably extend that shot out a little bit. So let's just drag the end of that and hopefully uh, there's not a whole, too much camera motion there. You might not be able to hear it on your end, but the ambient audio is just a little bit loud. And so I'm going to, with my Alt key held down, first of all, my volume is showing up here as highlighted. And then with my Alt key held down, I'm just going to reduce the volume of that ambient audio a little bit. It's kind of nice. And because we don't have any narration at this point, it's, it's nice to hear their feet walking on the ground. But we don't want it to be so overpowering that it is distracting from the visual. So try and get a good mix there of your ambient audio and your music. Well, we start to hear the music changing here. So we need a new shot. Let's have another shot. Uh, maybe they're entering the jungle at this point. 
And uh, here they are just going into the jungle. Like to try and catch something right there. There's a nice little clip here right where the camera just follows them into the jungle that is kind of nice, I think. So let's maybe start, let's play our hit the space bar. Wait for a little bit of steadiness on the camera and choose an endpoint. Let's use our keyboard shortcut this time, our I key. And then let's just hit the space bar to play that out a little bit. And hit your out key, your O key, I should say, for an out point. And then again, we'll use the drag and drop method to put that into place. And we've, I believe we left our playhead right at that point where we uh, wanted to place the new clip and where the music is changing there. So we're going to drop, we're going to just butt it right up against where the playhead is. And because we are in the overwrite mode of editing, this is going to overwrite that little last portion of the previous clip and replace it with the new clip. Well, we see that we probably were wrong there. We didn't have the playhead where we wanted it to change. Let's just undo that. And this time when we drag it down, let's put it right up against the end clip there. And that's probably better. Well, we see that there's just so much motion on the camera there. We're going to trim this back a little bit. So just grab a hold of the end of that clip and start moving your mouse to the right and that will trim up your clip a little bit so that you're starting more like about here. And then when you've got a point that you like, you can just slide that into place again. And now let's tr take a look at that. Okay, again, our um, ambient our audio is just a little loud. Let's pull that down a little bit. And we're ready for our next shot. I think actually I would like to just trim that back just a little bit more. I like the shot of the camera going through the leaves there. Following them into the jungle. And then our next shot is where they have reached their first spot to start collecting leaves. And the camera does kind of a little push in there. Let's try that and hit our O, our I key for our in point, play it a little bit. And hit the O key for an out. Um, at this point, we're not worried so much that it is precisely the, the length that we want. Uh, with this drag and drop method, it's very easy to to uh, bring one clip in, and if it's just a little bit more than what we needed, uh, we can either overwrite some of the previous clip so that uh, it ends. What we want to do is bring in a new clip right here where the narration starts. So our goal is to to make this clip of them, this wide shot of them uh, at their spot where they're picking leaves, to end here. So we could either uh, back it into the previous clip. Or if we wanted to see just a little bit more of that, uh, we could just at this point, let's undo this. We can just leave it hanging over the end there and not worry about it because when we bring in our next clip, it's easy to drop it right where we want it, right where the playhead is there and overwrite the section that we don't need or want. Let's go after our next shot. And because we know that our narration here introduces the main character of our film, the main character of the documentary, we want to have kind of a close-up of her face in our next shot. So we need to find a, a clip like that. Let's scroll, scrub through some of this and see if we've got a good one. Well, that's pretty good. Let's try and find something right in here where she's picking those leaves, hit our in point and just scrub down a little bit, hit an out point, and then we'll drag and drop that right into place where we want it to start. Now, the only time you have to worry about uh, doing 
this drag and drop method with a long clip there, if it goes past the point where you can actually see it, you might worry uh, a little bit, is it going to be overriding something else I have already placed on the timeline further? So we might want to adjust our timeline a little bit to make sure that we're not overriding anything and then do that drag and drop again and it looks like we're fine. With this uh, overwrite mode that we're in, it just completely covers that previous area that we no longer needed. Listening to this ambient audio again, the, the river that's going by, the little stream is way too loud for the feel of the music we want. So we adjust that. Oh, wow. He's 13. Now that the narration is starting to come in, we definitely do want to bring down the ambient audio on that so that it's not distracting anything away from the uh, narration. Pawa is 13 years old and lives in a remote village in the state of Karen, located in the... Okay, <clears throat> our clip is getting a little bit long there. And uh, so we need to make a decision. Are we going to add a new clip here or take it out to the second one? Maybe we can, at, at this point, at least live with t stretching it out to the second one there. And so let's uh, find one more clip of her... Maybe a different angle. This is probably okay here. Let's just grab a little bit of that to finish off this thought on our narration. Let's bring down the audio. Karen, located in the country of Myanmar, also known as Burma. Okay, so that seems to work. You'll notice that the color temperature of our shots uh, jump around quite a bit. Uh, what we're actually doing here as we chase these kids around in the jungle, we're using uh, one of these, uh, it's more of a consumer type of camera actually. It's a little camcorder that I use mostly to film my kids uh, activities at home. But uh, in this particular video shoot, I was um, experimenting with shooting most of the film just using a DSLR camera. And because I'm kind of brand new to this DSLR experiment, I uh, didn't want to take the chance of being out in this remote village and uh, try and get a stable handheld shot with just my DSLR. I know from past experience that you can run into all sorts of problems with focusing and uh, keeping it steady and, and uh, having a good stable shot just using the a handheld DSLR camera. So as a, a backup, I brought my little camcorder. The, the quality of the video is still very good, uh, but it does tend to uh, give a variety of different color balances. But uh, don't worry, we will be able to address this with certain filters that come with EDIUS, and we'll leave that for a different tutorial, actually, on how to work with color balance and... Uh, doing color correction and that type of thing so that we in the end before we're all done we'll even this uh, out so that uh, we don't have such harsh jumps from shot to shot as far as uh, color temperature goes but we're not worrying about that in this portion of our edit at this point all we're concerned about is getting our clips down on the timeline to help build our story all right, we have reached a point here where we have a nice adjustment in the music. We're, if you remember, we're actually increasing the volume of our music as we uh, have this little gap in the narration. Also known as Burma. Her name. So we're looking for a shot here that uh, maybe shows a little bit more action. I like this shot here of them wading through the river. So let's try putting that there. Camera, these consumer cameras sometimes record the audio way too hot. But that's better. Her name, when translated, means jungle flower. Okay, so we need, uh, looks like another, more of a close-up shot of her again. Let's see here. I think there was another one here that should work fairly good of her bending over with her little cute little basket there. Let's try that. Pop that into place. Oh, 
her name when translated it means jungle flower. Okay, that seems to work pretty good. Okay, for our next shot, uh, I've got some shots of them uh, on the other side of the river. Well, it's kind of dark. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Here, this one's a little better. It's like we've already got some in and out set from uh, taking a look at this clip earlier. And that's one of the things I like about Eddie is it remembers the in and outs that you might have selected or maybe an assistant has gone through all of your clips and selected the best in and out points for you already so that when you sit down you've got a good shot selected. You can just drag and drop that into place. It is a name that suits her well, as she and her friend. Okay. Um... Yeah, I think right in here kind of gives that jungle feel. Try that. She and her friends spent a lot of time in the jungle near their village, collecting leaves and other edible plants. Okay, and then I think there was another shot back here where um, the reflection off the water kind of catches her face and it's kind of cute. I want to try and use it. Collecting leaves and other uh, sorry, we're stuttering here a little bit. We're using a format of camera that uh, Edius is having to do a little conversion on the fly here as it uh, translates it into its own language. Plus, we're using software in the background to record this tutorial. Uh, you really, on your own, um, even on a slower computer, should be able to get real time with just one layer of video. So don't judge Edius based on what I'm able to do here with my laptop and uh, a tutorial recording program in the background leaves. But as I look at this, I think I want to actually extend that shot out a little bit and not uh, really see this shot till a little later. So I'm going to just drag that across and maybe push this over and start showing this shot just a little earlier. They can bring back to the families. So maybe uh, let that full narration end before we uh, change the clips. In... Okay, well, you get the idea of uh, how to piece this together, add video clips to go with your narration. I was hoping to uh, fill out this whole section here right up to the end of the little cute uh, interview and voiceover. Together. But I see our time is running a little bit long. But I think that uh, you get the idea here of how you can uh, start assembling your clips to go with your narration and music uh, using a drag and drop method in a way that will make it very easy to put your film together. So for now, I believe that that does it uh, for this episode of uh, how to edit documentaries. And in our next tutorial, uh, we're going to reassemble this first little section of the video using the three-point style of editing, just to show you a different way of, of how you could approach an edit of a documentary.